said that his was the second best really in death of a salesman put on in that last six months by the signatious players. <laughs> he was a marvelous. Oh, yeah. <sighs> goodness, they're gone. It's been here for three hours. I honestly feel I have no privacy anymore. And every time I mention the theatre or Acting, one of the pruns just appears out of nowhere. I may not see it. Thank you very much. That's all for today. Is there a second act? Yes, there is. Oh, now that you've got that out of the way, you can have a Mrs. Prun's going on holiday for three weeks, thank goodness. And her sister, Miss Prun, is looking after her flat. Make sure she doesn't get burgled. <laughs> Speaking of ugly facial hair, whatever happened to the good old days, eh? The good old days when you could leave your door open and not worry about getting ripped off. <sighs> who was that great philosopher? That great philosopher who said, honesty is such a lonely word. Everyone is so untrue. Billy <laughs> Joel. Was it? Cool. It's embarrassing. <laughs> I said, Jeff. Now, come in, then. <laughs> What'd you do that for? Well, I thought you were Marcel. Apologising for standing me up. You're supposed to be here an hour ago. <laughs> Filthy lying scum. Mm. Never mind, Thief. We'll just watch some television. OK, sit down. Oh, there's not much on. Oh, stupid, cheap thing. Look at that. I should never have allowed Glyn to let me buy it. Look at that reception. That is all we can get. That is a low, a low. Yes, I'm just ringing up the manufacturer so I can get a new one. <clears throat> Mrs. Baird, hello. I'd like to speak to your husband. <laughs> Mrs. Baird, yes, I know it's early in Scotland. <laughs> yes, I'm well aware your husband's been dead for 20 years. Use a Ouija board. <laughs> Mr. Baird, hello. It's about that television you sold me. Yes, it's not working properly. It's only showing really bad shows and I want it replaced. Surely it's in breach of the warranty. What do you mean the warranty ran out 27 years ago? Well, I'm never dealing with you again. Oh. So we'll replace it then, will he? Doing to an idea that talking to Jeff or watching that telly. <laughs> she bent over, right? And he's looking at her from the other. It's brilliant. It's beautiful. Well, Jeff, looks like I'm talking to you. Anything interesting happened to you today? No. Well, except when I was walking home, there were these three witches dancing around a cauldron saying, All hail Jeff of next door. <laughs> well, then they said something about, All hail Jeff who will appear in scene two. Mm -hmm. As I was walking off, they said, All hail Jeff who will breach section 19 of the Insurance Contracts Act. <laughs> yeah, other than that, nothing. <laughs> Jeff, if these three apparitions appeared to thee and said that, then it must be. But aren't you Jeff of next door? Yeah. And isn't this scene too? Yeah. Oh, gosh, this is too much of a coincidence not to be explored and built on. Oh. Come, you spirits. Unsex me and make us me perform these most vile and unnatural acts. Alrighty. No, sit down. <laughs> Hello? Is that the Bundaberg North International Worldwide Insurance Agency? Oh, good. Yes, I want to check my policy. My name is Fifi Gillespie. My friends call me Fief. 
No, not thief. Thief. That's what the five come. <laughs> yes. Uh, listen, just say that my flat was burgled and the television was stolen. You would replace it with a new one, wouldn't you? <laughs> well, good. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> the policy runs out at midnight tonight. <laughs> Why did I want to know? Well, uh, uh, oh, goodness me, is that the time? <gasps> then it must be tonight. Jeff, Jeff, listen to me. Tonight, we've got to get this television stolen before midnight. All right, well, I'll go paint a sign that says, uh, uh, burglar wanted, uh, apply within. Is that, oh, is that no, the idea? Jeff, you oh. fool. Gosh, that would be too simple. Listen, I have a plan so evil. That it scares even me. Jeff, <laughs> 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 you will steal the television. Well, isn't that dishonest? Well, we'll just make it look like a robbery. Yes. That way I get a new television with the insurance money and nobody gets hurt. Oh, <gasps> I, I don't like it. I mean, what about Glyn? Yeah. Oh, yes, Glyn. Always a fly in my ointment. <laughs> Foiling my schemes. Jealous of my beauty. <laughs> He's sure to think it was dishonest. Wait! It's Monday. He always visits baby Annie on Monday. He comes straight home, has a mug of hot chocolate, and goes straight to sleep. Oh, yes, he'd never know it was us. All right. Look, there's five bucks in it for you. Oh, count me in, sister. <laughs> I've never been so awake in all my life. <gasps> I had four cappuccinos, coffee cake, and two packets of industrial strength no-dos. <laughs> I found them down at the dump, luckily. I don't want to sleep. I don't want to sleep. Not tonight. I've been having dreams, dreams of foreboding. <laughs> Fifi walking down the street saying, Sleep, Jeff! Thou hast murdered sleep! That kind of thing. <laughs> you know, normally that wouldn't bother me, but tonight I noticed. There are comets, and the heavens are blazing fire from hell. And as I was walking past the cemetery, I looked and I saw that the graves, the graves were all opening up, spewing forth their dead. Just tell me, I saw Annie. I did, little baby Annie. I saw her, my little girl. She's well, thanks for asking. Look, look what I got for her at the um, All Hours shop. They were on special, I got them just for her. Look at that, little kinder surprise. <laughs> Some little rat sick <laughs> granules, so she they go down easy. And <laughs> look, this thing here isn't that a beauty, huh? I'll show you what this is. Who goes over there? It's a real trap. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's real. That is. <laughs> No, it's not really for her. Tea, go on. It's not for her. This is for her. That's it, and this kind of surprise is for me. Anyway, I've got the bear trap, because we're going hunting tomorrow in the Blue Mountains for koala. Not for the food, just for the sheer sport of it. <laughs> um, I'll just put this bear trap over here. Oh. Just put it there so it can air out. That way it won't go off. <laughs> oh, look. Look, everyone, someone's left the window unlocked. <clears throat> Better lock it. <gasps> oh, nearly walked in the bear trap. <laughs> Luckily, I didn't. I'm so awake. I'm going to watch telly all night. <laughs> wonder what's on. Oh, it's hello, hello. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Alarm! Uh, I haven't got one. Yeah, cut him off. Oh, it's a bit physical. Uh, here, scream loudly, do silly things to great comic effect. <laughs> said to Dame Nellie Melba, just before she did the Fleur ad, I said to her, Nellie, I said, for I was allowed such liberties. I said to her, Nellie, I said, Nell, have a nice cup of tea and it will calm your nerves. Oh, cup of tea, that doesn't work. Now, I want you to take this all down, dear. No, I'm not going to have it. Hold your nose. Oh, uh, oh, oh. Good. Oh, poison. Oh. Much better. I feel totally relaxed. <laughs> Thanks, Miss Prun. Guys, do you know what? I don't think we need a television. Nah, let's not have one anymore. Let's just read books and converse with one another and, and we can play charades. Yes. Oh, Miss Prun, I feel so much better for that. <sighs> Hello. I'm the insurance assessor. Yeah, and you're gorgeous. <laughs> what the hell's going on here? Well, we had a television and it's gone, but it doesn't matter because we don't want it anymore. No, 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 no. Listen, <coughs> listen, our television's been stolen and it's covered under this policy. It was stolen before midnight and we want a replacement one at once. <laughs> if you read page 117B of the policy document, there is written in lemon juice the exclusion which says this policy does not cover any claim whatsoever. No, look, of course, course the exclusion has to be read on the night of an equinox with a full moon. <laughs> it's the equinox tonight, isn't it? Ah, uh, no. Yes, it is. It is too. Let's have a look. 
Yes. I can see it there. The, the full moon is reflecting off the piranha's eyeball there. And it says, <laughs> burglary will be covered in the event of a successful police prosecution. Boys, correct. It says it there in green and sepia. <laughs> you think you can put one over the old Funderburg North International Worldwide Insurance Agency with your fancy lawyer talk? But you'll be sorry. <laughs> Did it say successful police prosecution? Yeah, yeah, well, you wouldn't want that, would you, Glyn? Calling the cops right now. <gasps> Oh, well, uh, Jeff and I will just pop out for, uh, a spell, huh? Hello? Is this the police? Well, I'd like to report a burglary. <coughs> Thanks, Chantel. <coughs> Hello? This is Sergeant Smith of Convoice. How did you get my number? And who's talking? It's Glyn Nicholas of 61 Leprosy Street. I got your number on that television show, you know, Cops 911. Well, listen, Mr. Glyn Nicholas. We've just had four murders here this morning. There's currently a riot going on outside. Missiles are being hurled at my constable's actual um, ballistic missile. <laughs> <coughs> One of the prisoners in my lockup has just committed su hey, damn. Has just committed suicide, shot himself five times in the um, back. So things are not very good. Now, what's your problem? Well, someone stole our television. What? Well, why didn't you say so before? <laughs> Listen up, everyone. If the television been nicked, I want all units around the Glyn Nicholas's house, 61 Leprosy Street, on the double. Drop what you're doing and, and go. <laughs> you're all tight, missus. I'm sending around my best man. <laughs> Eric, it's time to catch some, some creams. Well, that's Yeah. You go with him, love. Don't worry. I'll see you later on in the motel, eh? Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> oh, come on, Sean Tool. Oh, got a dollar. <laughs> I'll be able to buy a cake. No, no, no. I better hand it into the police, because that is the honest thing to do. <laughs> oh, they're coming round. Guests. <laughs> Better clean up. <laughs> Open up, police! Ah, uh, come in. It's open. <laughs> Are you Glenn Nicholas? Yes. Who shall I make it out to? Right, up against the table, frisk him. Hey, 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 you can Get off, get off. <laughs> I happen to be a law-abiding citizen. Look, I'll prove it to you. I found a dollar. Now, I could have kept that for myself, but instead, I'm handing it in to the police. Oh, thank you. You dork. Get into him. <laughs> right, I want uh, fingerprints. Hair, specks of paint, blood samples, urine samples, species samples, samples of saliva, and then for main course, oh, thank you. I want fingerprints, DNA tests, handwriting experts report, and a computer graphic of all the ancestors. Hey, you want all of that from me? Hey. <laughs> Turn everything in this place upside down. Uh, excuse me, officers. Oh, oh, Lord. Lord. Um, I saw on television once where if they can't solve the crime immediately, they do a reenactment. Yes, well, that might work on the TV, but this is real life. <laughs> <laughs> then again, you might have something there. Well, we do seem to have a bit of a problem because we seem to be a little short of good actors <laughs> who can do this reenactment. I mean,. <laughs> I wouldn't call myself a great actor. <laughs> no, me neither. <laughs> what I meant was we, we need another actor. Did somebody say actor? Hey, look. You go easy on them boobies. Can't want you blabbing to no cops, right? Just take a nice and easy. Yeah, 
is it? Noise. Noise. You say nothing. Shh. You did nothing. You saw nothing. You got nothing on us. Well, they've got a bear trap on me. <laughs> Excuse me, Adam, telephone. Oh. Phone. Huh? Telephone. Hey. Uh, Fee? Hey. It's Glyn. Listen, I've got some news. The police can't proceed with the investigation. Well, that's good. No, no, it's not. It's bad. But listen, they're going to do a reenactment of the crime and try and solve it that way. Oh, that's bad. <sighs> that's good. Thief, you've been drinking. <laughs> See yous. <laughs> Light them up, big boy. Ooh. We're going again. <laughs> gentles one and all to our humble play and forgive us as we present to you the historical drama Il Ladro Televisio. Oh, do speak up, dear. dawn of time, <laughs> when Wotan slept with Erda, <laughs> they gave birth to domestic serenity, <laughs> the goddess of the hearth, hearth, <laughs> who danced by the sea, by the hills, and on the plain, <laughs> in tranquility, <laughs> harmony, and peace. <laughs> what the hell is this? Excuse me, this is the prologue. We're trying to establish a mood. Yeah, well, get on with it. All right, we'll have to skip the love well, scene. Well, we're um, just going to get, 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 get on with it. Yes, well, Right, don't rush it. Last scene, last scene. Okay. Last scene. <laughs> From the diaphragm. <laughs> the last scene takes place with me as Glyn Nicholas. It's not really me. <laughs> as Glyn Nicholas. <laughs> on at home on the night that the foul deed took place. Oh, I cannot sleep this balmy night. For I am gripped just with anxiety. Just, just go straight to the bit where the burglar comes in. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> oh, I cannot sleep. I shall watch television all night. I wonder what's on. Ah, oh, hello, hello. <laughs> I am burglar. Oh, hurt my finger. <laughs> Lo, yon television. I will purloin. Purloins! <laughs> thief! Thief! Oh, I'm defenseless! Don't hurt me! Oh, please, don't! Oh, please! Don't hurt me, sir! Gentlemen, I have no hesitation in finding that the criminal who has perpetrated this crime, as was evidenced by the reenactment, is. Mr. Glyn Nicholas. No, 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 listen. I was playing the part of someone else. Oh, yeah, sure. It wasn't me, Thief. Do you know it wasn't me, Thief? Jeff, say something. Oh, I, don't, I don't know him. Jeff? I've never seen him before. Jeff! I was never in his gang. Jeff! <laughs> You know, loves, 
Crime doesn't pay. I believe that's true. Well, here I am. <laughs> in prison, it's not so bad. Get three meals a day. Get to pump iron with the brothers. <laughs> Ten showers a day is quite good. <laughs> anyway, I know I'm innocent, and you know that. That's the main thing, that we know that I'm innocent. I mean, I just don't know what went wrong. Sometimes, you know, bad things happen to good people, but I always believe that if you do the right thing in life, you'll be okay. If, you, if you're honest and, and try to do what is true, you'll be all right, and I firmly believe that. The only regret that I have is that I miss my little girl. I miss her very much. She's growing up and I'm in here, but one day I'll see her again and I'll, I'll explain everything. Yeah, when I get out of here, when I'm free. And we'll go for, thanks. We'll go for walks together in the, in the fields. And, and we'll, by Please, the sea. Smile, yeah. smile. Oh. <laughs> Cheers, buddy. Good on you. Thanks, guys, for being so supportive. Isn't someone going to say Paul? <laughs> And what a way to go. There we say goodbye to Glyn for now. In a moment, a look at our new series beginning next week. Then stay with us for review.